guys. Assalamualaikum. So today we continue topic two. Interval estimation for one population mean. First look at what is estimator. The objective of doing research on a certain population is to determine population parameters such as the population mean denoted by mu and the population standard deviation denoted by sigma. So this one population mean and then this one population standard deviation but it is often not practical to study the population especially if the population size is large. Therefore, the researcher will conduct a survey to find the sample mean denoted by x bar and the sample standard deviation denoted by s. So, estimator is a sample statistics used to estimate a population parameter. So, the keyword here is sample statistics means calculated based on sample. A good estimator should satisfy the three following properties. First, the estimator should be an unbiased estimator. Second, the estimator should be consistent. And third properties, the estimator should be a relatively efficient estimator. So now, let's look at the introduction to estimation. First point estimate. So this one, a specific numerical value used to estimate a population parameter. Second, estimate. A value assigned to a population parameter based on the value of a sample statistics. Third, interval estimate. An interval that is constructed around the point estimate and contains the corresponding population parameter. For confidence interval. So this one, a specific interval estimate of a parameter determined by using data obtained from a sample and also by using the specific confidence level of the estimate. So, what is confidence interval? The probability that the interval estimate will contain the population parameter. So, this one, how to calculate or how to find the point estimation for mean and variance. Point estimation for mean denoted by x bar. Meanwhile, point estimation for variance denoted by s squared. Okay guys, so now we proceed to interval estimation for mean. So this one focus on one population. The population from which the sample is drawn is normal or approximate normal. So, when the data or the sample is normal distribution, we can construct the confidence interval for mean. But remember that the variance or standard deviation is based on two different cases. Either the standard deviation is known or unknown. Let's look at the cases. First case, if variance or standard deviation is known. So this one, how to calculate the confidence interval. We will use set table 
but look at here the sigma sigma means the standard deviation based on population case number two if variance or standard deviation is unknown with at least 30 sample size so this one and greater and equal to 30 based on sample size so this is the formula on how to calculate the confidence interval for one population mean we will use z table but this one s so s represents the value of standard deviation based on sample and last case case number three if variance or standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is less than 30 so and less than 30 we will use t table and here the standard deviation value based on sample so this one the formula how to calculate the confidence interval for one population mean for third case you must remember the concept of these three different cases on how to find or on how to calculate the interval estimation for mean but this one based on one population mean for example the height of a sample of eight plants taken at random from a plot are shown below Suppose it is known that the population standard deviation is 6.6332. So this one, the measurement taken from eight plant. Find 95% confidence interval for the mean height of all plants in the plot. So first, calculate the sample mean. So, the sample mean, which is denoted by x bar, calculated from these 8 measurements, equal to 79.5. Next, look at here, the sigma. Sigma represents the population standard deviation. That's why the sigma is used, which is equal to 6.6332 next information is the sample size equal to 8 and last one the alpha value equal to 0 0.05 so the alpha value calculated 100 minus 95 equal to 5% convert to decimal form 0 0.05 so using this formula so look at here we will use this formula sigma because the population standard deviation is known and then we will use z table substitute next step you will find this value z so alpha over 2 equal to 0 0.025 so based from here alpha over 2 so alpha over 2 0 0.05 divide by 2 equal to 0 0.025 here and then using this table the value equal to 1.96 so 1.96 based on alpha over 2 0 0.025 so where is 0 0.025 here 1.96 
So 1.96. Calculate at the end. 95% confidence interval for the mean height of all plants in the plot in between 74.9 and 84.1. Or you can write like this. Either one. So this one, first example, to represent first case. We proceed to second example. A shopkeeper complains that the average weight of chocolate bars of a certain type that he is buying from a wholesaler is less than the stated value of 85 gram. The shopkeeper weighted 100 bars from a large delivery and found that their weights had a mean of 83.6 gram and standard deviation of 7.2 gram. So calculate the limits of a 99% confidence interval for mean weight of the chocolate bars in the shopkeeper's delivery. So this one, first step, list all the information given. First, Sample mean denoted by x bar. So this one here, the value of 83.6 based on 100 bars. That's why here is x bar. Sample mean calculated from sample. Second information, s equal to 7.2. So here, Standard deviation of 7.2, same as mean, calculated from 100 bars. And this one, sample size, n equal to 100. And last one here is alpha value. So alpha equal to 0.01. So this one calculated based on 100 minus 99 equal to 1%. So convert to decimal 0 0.01. So we will use this formula to calculate the confidence interval for mean. Why? Because the standard deviation is unknown. Why unknown? Because the standard deviation calculated from the sample, 100 bars. Substitute all the values and then we will use this table. Table 4. Find the value of Z when alpha over 2 equal to 0 0.005. So where is it? 0 0.005. Here. So the value equal to 2.5758. Substitute and then calculate at the end the confidence interval for mean weight of the Chocolate bars in the shopkeeper's delivery in between 81.75 to 85.45 gram. So this one, second case. When the standard deviation is unknown, but the sample size is 100, which is greater than 30. T. Let's try third example. An automatic milk vending machine dispenses a different amount of milk in ounces for each cup. Assume the 10 measurements below were taken from a population with a normal distribution. So this one, the researcher collect 10 data. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the mean amount of ounces that is dispensed for all cups of milk from this vending 
machine. So, first one. Look at here. X bar equal to 6.32. And then this one, S equal to 0 0.3533. So, these two calculated value based on this data. You need to calculate the sample mean and also the sample standard deviation using the 10 measurements. So this one, the sample standard deviation means that the standard deviation is unknown. And then, what is the n value? n equal to 10, which is less than 30. Next, alpha equal to 0 0.01. So this one calculated from this value, 99%. So 100 minus 99 equal to 1%. So 1% convert to decimal 0 0.01. Therefore, this one is third case. Standard deviation is unknown and the sample size less than 30. Therefore, we will use T table. Here is the T table, table 7. So look at here, first row represents the alpha value. And then first column, V. So V represents the degree of freedom so degree of freedom based on n minus 1 so next step calculate the confidence interval substitute all the values into the formula like that okay so look at here 0 0.005 so this one based on here alpha over 2. So alpha over 2 means that 0 0.01 divided by 2 equal to 0 0.005. So that's why here is 0 0.005. So where is alpha equal to 0 0.005 here? And then degree of freedom equal to 9 so 9 here so the value equal to 3.25 substitute calculate at the end the final answer for the 99% confidence interval for the mean for this example in between 5.96 and 6.68 so this one the example on how to apply third case using t distribution table now you can try to do the three chart questions at the end you can check the answer Okay guys, that's all about the interval estimation for one population mean. Assalamualaikum.